What was going on in your head? Oh man, it was a bit of an adrenaline rush, to be honest. <laughs> I was walking out of here and I was shaking, and then we went over to Champs and I had to have a, have a beer, an adult <laughs> beverage after this. And I was just sitting at the table and my hands was just going like this, I couldn't stop. And uh, it, was, it was crazy, I mean, I didn't imagine seeing a golf ball fly 40, 50 yards farther on some occasions than what I was already hitting. I thought what I had was, was pretty solid. Morning, it's Larry Bobka here again at one of the fitting bays, and I'm joined with one of my customers here at Second Swing, Mitch, Mitchell Scribner, and we are going to talk about your fitting. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me give you a little background on our relationship, and you know, the, we are not the best of friends. We're we're becoming better friends, but um, you really came to see me originally for your putting. Mm -hmm. You had qualified for the Minnesota State Open and felt like you needed a little work on your putting, so I helped you with your putting. And you got through that, and then through a mutual friend of ours, um, Austin Eaton, we played a round of golf together uh, late this summer, and I saw a few things, kind of mentioned a couple of things. We, we had an adult beverage after the round, talked about what um, what I thought about your golf game, what I thought about your clubs. Um, you were very nice to have me out at Island View a few weeks ago before the beautiful Minnesota weather hit. And we rode together, spent some time, really talked a little bit more about your equipment. You decided to come in for a full bag. And we really saw some really cool things. But I guess the coolest thing we saw was the driver. Uh, you were very nice to post some stuff. So kind of just you know tell me tell me kind of your feeling after after that fitting after you posted what you know what, what was going on in your head oh man it was a bit of an adrenaline rush to be honest <laughs> i was walking out of here and i was shaking and then we went over to champs and i had to have a have a beer an adult <laughs> beverage after this and i was just sitting at the table and my hands was just going like this i couldn't stop and uh it was it was crazy i mean the, I didn't imagine seeing a golf ball fly 40, 50 yards farther on some occasions than what I was already hitting. I thought what I had was was pretty solid. Well, in, in you know, background, you're you're about 30 years old, right? Yep. And you know, you played in the state open. You want to play in more things. You want to play in the mid am. You want to play in, and so you work a lot on your golf swing. You work a lot on your your body, and you know, you want to work a lot on your equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, in the rounds that I saw that you played, we just you weren't getting enough out of your driver. You know, I saw some really good golf swings and, you know, since I'm old as I've already told every one of you out there, I've seen a lot of golf swings in my life. And I just, you know, I'd watch you hit a golf shot on the golf course and you'd be like, well, you liked it, but it wasn't optimal. And I always thought the ball that you were hitting was just falling out of the sky. Uh, after seeing so many golf shops in my life, I kind of have this internal track man, and you know, you're just not getting, you're just not getting. When I can see somebody like you who can stand there and rip a two iron off a downhill lie from 250 on a green, you got to be driving it better than you're driving it. Yeah. So that that was my kind of impetus to to kind of push you in to come in for a fitting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, as we went through, we did a new set of irons for you, got some better shafts, then we worked at the driver. You know, kind of how did you, how did you end up with this driver, your, your gamer, your current gamer now, and I've got the magic weapon here. So, tell us a little bit about how, how that journey was to get there. Kind of a funny story, I was hitting the, I think it was a TaylorMade R1 and I needed something else. I had the, I had the M3 at one point, I was kind of a tailor-made guy, and I was hitting balls in this simulator, and, and I thought, I need to find something else, and I hit it straighter, because I'm not hitting this anywhere. And then the Bryce and DeChambeau effect kicked in, and I thought, I gotta find something that I can swing faster. <laughs> and so I, I uh, had a friend who, at the simulator, said, I'm thinking about selling this driver, and I always struggled keeping the ball down right. in, in my lifetime. And so I went to, so what do you got? And he said, well, I got the G400 LST, with this Atmos Shaft 65 Fujikura, and I thought, I hit it, and I was like, dang, this thing's coming off 
screaming. I was sitting at, I was getting my club head speed up around 120 at that time last year. Right. When I was doing more CrossFit. Yep. There you go. <laughs> but uh, it just worked. I mean, it, that's all it was. And so that's kind of how it came to be. There was no fitting involved with it. It was just something that, that worked at the time. Right. And it, and it, you know, you played a lot of good rounds with it. And like I said, you know, it's, it's kind of a fairway finder. It's a little mm -hmm. short. I think it's 44 inches. Yep. And but it wasn't really optimal from a standpoint of the ball. Uh, we've got some numbers from the shot. So you know, let's take a look at it. And we we've kind of pared the numbers down. You know, your average your average club head speed was 110.5 miles an hour, which is very fast. 160 mile an hour ball speed. Smash factor 145. Pretty you know pretty efficient driver. Um, launch angle was 11.5, but we're only spinning it. That was the average spin rate was 18.04. So the thing, so my internal track man that I saw on the golf course, and you'd hit it hard, and all of a sudden the ball would just fly out there and it would just die. You know, and there's a couple holes you play out at Island View where you like to, there's a possibility of carrying some water and doing some things, and you never did that because the ball, you couldn't keep it in the air. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it was flying 263, rolling out to 298, you know, I'd be happy with that. Most of the world would be happy with that. But it wasn't optimal for a player of his caliber. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, and there's the kind of look of it. Uh, you know, the other thing that, that I saw, especially when we had played our one round at brackets, you would miss it a little bit and the ball would seem to squirt off the face because mm -hmm. it didn't have enough spin and all of a sudden it would it would it would squirt left or squirt right and you know you you'd be thinking you you were thinking it's your golf swing i'm thinking it's your golf club so you know typical club fitter club jockey that i am yeah. uh you know i'm looking at your golf swing going you made a really good golf swing you know and there's kind of the impact we were making we're making an impact that was rather high on the face that was kind of encouraging that knuckleball effect. Mm -hmm. And it really, really wasn't. And, you know, we have since, because the driver was set in the lowest setting, so it was set, it was a nine degree set at seven five into the big minus, as we call it, for ping. Uh, since then, till we get the new magic weapon, you know, you're not going to play a lot of golf in Minnesota, unfortunately, but we actually did loft it up a little bit to help it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But still, it, it's not really going to give us optimal numbers. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of went through a little bit of, a little bit of look. We, we went through, went to a Ping G425. We went to a, um, which if we take a look at the 425, oh, we got a little bit more carry. We didn't really necessarily pick up any more speed. It was a little bit better on the carry, but it really didn't do much better than what he had in the golf bag. Okay, tried a couple different shafts with that, but the ping was ping was okay. Um, then from there, kind of went to one of my favorite drivers in uh, Danny Farrell, who's very nice of us, who's doing the who's doing the uh, behind the work screen there with the uh, with the mouse. Uh, one of our favorite drivers this year has been the Callaway Speed Driver. Really seen some, some hot numbers. You see it, uh, Champions Tour player, even PGA Tour players, you see the speed in their golf bags. So we went to a 10-5 first of all. Oh, and we picked up some speed. Yeah. Thus, they call it speed. Uh, we got a little bit more club head speed. We got a little bit more ball speed. We launched it a little bit higher, but because it was 10 and a half degrees, it spun a little bit more. So our carry distance has gone up. So from, from your original driver, we're already carrying the ball 11 yards farther. Okay, not quite as much rollout because of the spin, but now you're starting talking about being able to carry bunkers and water and things that are gonna make it a little bit easier for you to play golf. So we're 11 yards longer in the air on average, just with that one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not being the smartest guy in the world, I figured we go nine degrees. Let's see what we do. Let's bring the spin rate down. So kind of as you were going through this fitting, Mitch, you know, you're starting to get excited, right? Yep. 
okay? You're seeing some great numbers come up. Uh, so now all of a sudden, then we jump into a nine degree. So we jump into the nine degree, and you see, we tried a couple different settings in the 10.5, but really not, really didn't get anything optimal. So then we jump into, we jump into our nine degree. And we jumped into a nine degree with, with the hazardous smoke, IM10, extra stiff, 60 gram shaft. Well, our world kind of changed. <laughs> Our world went to 115 miles an hour. We got five miles an hour. How did we get five miles an hour? We went to a lighter shaft. We went to a standard length golf club at 45 inches. Okay, it's it's fit. It's you know it's physics. A longer lever, you're going to swing it fast. If I if I can take this longer lever and swing it fast, it's going to go faster. So now all of a sudden we've jumped up. We've jumped up now, our ball speed has jumped up, average of 167.7. Smash factor still in a great range. Our launch angle has gone up, okay? Our spin rate has gone up to what I would consider more acceptable level from 1800 to 2300. Now all of a sudden, we're carrying the ball 293 yards. What are you thinking then? That's crazy. That's insane. And you're not working, but you're making the same golf swings. Yep. And this is what I always knew was going to happen mm -hmm. if we got you into the right, into the right golf club. Right. You know, it's kind of my favorite analogy, which you've all heard, is it's like trying to eat soup with a fork. <laughs> it's not very efficient. He's got a fork in his hand. I got the spoon, okay? Now all of a sudden, we're carrying the ball 293 yards. We have, Danny, if you can just take us back to the stats for a second. Now all of a sudden, we're rolling out, we're rolling out to 313 yards. So our carry's gone up 30 yards. Our rollout has gone up to about 20 yards, okay? We did have a couple in there that were in the 340 range, as I remember. Mm -hmm. That's when you got really, really excited and your fiance was here also. Yeah. So, you know, so kind of tell me what you're thinking when all of a sudden you got 30 more yards in carry in your driver. I just think of specific holes on the golf courses now that I play that I'm, I'm going to be going for par fours that I need a 294 force carry to get home. And that just was never in my bag before. And when you're, when you're putting, instead of having a wedge in your hand, that helps your, your golf game, right? Par five. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> par fives. Right. Shorter clubs in the par fives. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that, that we were talking about is you played the state open. You played against some of the kids that I coach at Minnesota. Yep. And he's like, Larry, how do I hit? How do I keep up with them? It's hard. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. Father Time's not kind. Even though you're 30 years old, you know these kids are 20. These kids are 18 years old. They are built for speed. Yep. You know, and that makes it really hard. So, your desire is to try to keep up and try to be competitive mm -hmm. in these events against these kids. 30 yards more carry is competitive. You know, because if you, when you play the state open, they were hitting it past you, right? They were like 30 to 40 yards longer than me. And I was hitting seven iron and they got wedge in their hand into some of these long par fives or somewhat normal par fives. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but still. Yeah. So now all of a sudden we've got 30 yards more carry. You know, now you're in shouting different distance. Yeah. You know, it's always uh, the, the funny story is when you're playing golf with somebody and somebody blows it by you about 40 or 50 yards, it's like, Hey, did they build a Walmart in between us? Yeah. We've all heard that. Well, now maybe maybe there's just a gas station in between. Yeah. Maybe you're going to hit it farther. I know you're going to hit it farther, some of these guys now. But it just gives you another weapon. It gives you another advantage that as you fine-tune your game and as you work on your game, mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of changes your mindset. And like you said, there's holes that you can think of that you can play that you're going to be a lot more aggressive on where you're gonna stand there and you're gonna hit it. One of the things that I like, Danny, if you can take us back to the 
just to the to the numbers and and I'll tell you what's really significant for me as a club fitter down there we're at 14.6 and 2300 his driver was 11 5 1800 for you speed people out there even for your non-speed people 1800 to 2300 is a huge speed number because now when he hits the center of the face, he's going to get a better shot. When he doesn't hit the center of the face, he gets a way better shot now with the spoon than he did with his fork. Okay, The ball is not going to squirt off the face anymore. We've all hit those drives where all of a sudden you hit it in the heel and you hit it in the toe, and all of a sudden it just, it just shoots out there. And you hit a lot of the, you, you know, we played a you know, a round of golf, a couple of rounds of golf together, you'd probably maybe hit three or four of those. Mm -hmm. Well, for somebody of your caliber, that's three or four too many. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you're been a club champion at Island View, correct? Yes. Been yep. a club champion how many times at Timber Creek? Three times. Three time club champion. You know, the man can play golf. So you shouldn't have to put up with bad, with bad numbers. You shouldn't have to put up with bad shots when it's ability. That's the reason we always talk about coming in here, getting fit, seeing what's going on. You know, you talked about how excited you were, how, you know, we had to go get an adult <laughs> beverage afterwards because it is exciting, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's cool. It is. It's really cool. You know, all of a sudden you're like, you're kind of wishing it was July rather than, <laughs> rather than approaching January, right? Right. You'd like to be out there hitting golf shots. But that's what that's what a fitting does. Mm -hmm. That's you know that's what makes it really cool. And you know you're you're you know you're in the real estate business, right? Out of uh, uh, we office out of Eden Prairie, but um, I live in Victoria currently. Yeah. So you know you you're around a lot of people. You play a lot of golf with a lot of people. You kind of use, use golf for your business, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Really cool now to be playing. Now all of a sudden, some of those guys you played with in the past. You're hitting it thirty. You're gonna hit it thirty yards farther. They're gonna go. What happened there? Well, it's really cool for us from a second swing standpoint too. Mm -hmm. You know, let's be totally honest. Why? Why do? Why do we do this? We do this to create relationships. One to help him play better, be excited about his golf game. But now, Mitch becomes a disciple for us. Going, you know what? I just went and saw Larry, and I got thirty more yards. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. You know, that's that relationship. And as we go through, you know, we as the driver comes in, might have to change a setting a little bit. We might, you know, take a little loft off, put a little loft on. You never know till you get it out there in the real world. But we definitely saw from this standpoint, we got a driver that goes significantly longer. I mean, you know, doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out I want the orange driver. I don't want the white driver, you know. Yeah. And you're also going to see, you know, I, I shot a video this morning that you'll see long is a whole lot better than old man short. <laughs> so um, any kind of thoughts about, any thoughts, you know, in closing here about what you, what you felt, you know, kind of your experience, just, you know, what do you think? I'm so glad that I did it, Larry. I, I should have done it earlier. I probably cost myself some strokes and some big moments on the golf course over the years. And um, coming in here, I had no idea. My mind was completely open. I didn't care what club I was getting, what the brand was, what the shaft was. I just, whatever you tell me is best, Larry, whatever the numbers look like. And uh, I'm, I should have done it earlier. That's my thoughts after it all. Well, and I appreciate the confidence, but you know, you sell houses. I fit golf clubs, yeah. you know, and, and that's what we do for a living. And that's why that's why I, I really, you know, is, is is we got to know each other better and play a little golf together. That's why I really kept kept the needle, kept the needle in there going. You need to come in. You need to take a look at this because mm -hmm. you do hit some beautiful shots. You got a beautiful golf swing. You know, you make great contact but you just weren't optimizing what you were doing, especially on the driver standpoint. You know, we didn't change your three wood. Uh -oh. Your three wood's absolutely beautiful. It does exactly what you want it to do. Uh -huh. We didn't change your two iron, which no. is an absolute rocket ship. 
but we did put you in a new set of uh, ZX7s, mm -hmm. went to uh, dynamic old X100s, yep. which has been, you know, quite frankly, the standard in, in better player shafts for 50 years, 40 yeah. years. No reason to fight City Hall. We got more consistent flight. Uh, one of the things I didn't like about your iron flight was it seemed to be a little, seemed to be a little inconsistent. Also, I didn't didn't think the shaft fit was quite. Plus, you were you know pretty close to wearing out your club. So <laughs> yeah. we needed we needed some we needed some grooves, folks. Yeah. Um, but you know, you just look you just look at those numbers and you look at you look at what you did on yours and there's really nothing wrong and can you throw those three wood numbers up Danny you know so we talked we talked about your three wood well if you look at your three wood we're you know almost 107 miles an hour 156 launches at 11 spun at 21 258 289 I mean your three wood your three woods going almost as far as your driver and you knew that right yeah. that's one of the things is is you talked about as we started the fitting was you know you didn't feel like your your driver was was going there wasn't a, that much of a gap between your driver and your three wood right because that's a great three wood especially at your speed to have to have a weapon like that where you can tee it up and feel like you can feel like you can hit it 260 270 down the middle of the fairway every time mm -hmm. with the three woods great to have chase some par fives Mm -hmm. chase some longer par fives mm -hmm. but we needed to find that we needed to find that weapon so now if you take a look at your three wood in your old driver they there's not much separation now we've got separation between your three wood and your driver and now we've got two distinctive clubs that are going to do two different things for us mm -hmm. and are going to really help us mm -hmm. play some better golf and be you know reach the levels that you'd like to because you're I mean what's your what would what would be a realistic goal for you as a player what would you love to do you know well I'd, I'd love to win a state am honestly um, I take it I take it win at the state open too but just uh, get in the have a chance on on the final day to to do that would be uh, the, probably the highest reaching goal that I could ask for. Okay, and I think that's a very realistic goal for you, having played golf with you. Um, I think it's very realistic for you to, to qualify for a U.S. Mid-Am. Mm -hmm. I think that is very realistic, and I think for you to play well at one would be realistic too. Right. You know, we played Austin Eaton, who, who won the U.S. Mid-Am. Right. You know, we played golf with him. There's nothing, you know, he's a good player. He's right. a very, very good player. I mean, he's a USGA champion. Yeah. But your game compares fairly well with his game. Mm -hmm. He drove the, the day we played, he drove the ball better than you did. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and that's, again, the reason I kept getting you to come in here. So, mm -hmm. you know, I really appreciate you coming in today. Uh, you know, a lot of times we do these videos and we talk about players, and we talk about fittings, and we never put a face to, to the fitting. But I appreciate you coming in, talking about this a little bit, uh, posting on Instagram how excited you were, uh, which kind of jogged me to get you back in here, talk about this, and, and really see and you know what what i'd love to do is is the new clubs in as clubs come in and the spring uh hits you know we'll do a follow-up mm -hmm. we'll get you back in here we'll see how it's going we'll see how the new drivers work and we'll talk about it but i think it's i think it's great i appreciate you coming in and uh folks all i can tell you is this is uh this is a success story we're not going to let it fall we're going to we're gonna definitely follow it up through the golf course, follow a little bit through his competitive rounds next year, see how it works out. And, but these are the kind of things that we can do for you when you come in for a fitting. So he was content. Now you're not content with your driver anymore, AKA the fork. Um, so we really need to uh, get you in here, hit some golf shops, be optimal. Maybe your goal, maybe your goal isn't to win a state am or to qualify for a U.S. Man. Maybe your goal is to win your flight championship at your club. You know what? To win your league championship, whatever it may be, we can help you with that. 
And there's, there's, if you're serious about golf, we're serious about golf. Get yourself in here, second swing. Work with me, work with Danny, work with one, another one of our tour van fitters. We're gonna help you play better golf. So everybody, thanks for watching and uh, go ahead and click that like button and tell us what you, uh, tell us what you think about our videos. And we will uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Mitch, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Larry. Okay.